All right, this is a conclusion of section 2-3. You should be on page 11 of your packet. And uh, what we're going to be looking at here are um, rational numbers, the rational zero test in, in order for us to find the zeros of a function. Rational numbers, once again, are they're real numbers that can be written as fractions. Here's what the rational zero test is. Um, first of all, we're looking at when dealing with a polynomial in its normal form, we're able to figure out what the possible real rational zeros are, whether they're whole numbers, negative, fractions, um, but you use the rational zero test. If the polynomial does have integer coefficients, integer coefficients here, a sub n, and here the a sub zero, as long as these are integers, then the rational zeros are considered to be p over q. And what those p over q's mean are, they come from the a sub zero and the a sub n. Okay, but here's what they mean. p is the factor of the constant term a sub zero. So the p would be all the factors of six. And you can see here that I've listed the factors of six both plus and minus because they're integers. And then q is the factor of the leading coefficient, so the factors of 3. So here's q, which are factors of 3 plus and minus 1 and 3. And so all of the possible rational zeros come from this ratio. So all of the factors of p over q, and then here are the combinations of all of those, all possible solutions. So if a polynomial, if this polynomial has any real solutions, they're going to be in this list. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to look at uh, the, you can see here your packet's not going to give you a whole lot of room to do this, so you might need to have some paper out or a scratch piece of paper to do some of the solving. Here's our first example. So the first, the first thing that you're going to want to do is figure out your p over q's. So the p would be the factors of 12, plus and minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Your q's would be plus and minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. So here are your possible p over q's. They could equal plus and minus we're going to just list them all. You could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. Um, you could also have, I'm just including in this the list of the, the ratios as well. So 1 half, 1 fifth. You could have 1 tenth. Two halves would be one, so two fifths. Two tenths would be one fifth. We've already included that, so now we're going to three halves, <coughs> three fifths, three tenths, and then four halves is two, four fifths. Four tenths reduces to two fifths, and we already have that one. 6 halves is 3, 6 fifths, 6 tenths reduces down to 3 fifths, we have that included. 12 halves is 6, 12 fifths would be 6 fifths, and then 12 tenths, or sorry, 12 fifths we do need to include, 12 fifths, but 12 tenths would be 6 fifths. I'm just basically taking all the combinations of the top number and the bottom number and making sure we give our list. So here's our list of all possible real solutions. Now here's what you do with your list. You try to do, use synthetic division to find out in this list right here, do any of these give you a solution to the function? Our solution to the function would be if you get a remainder of zero using synthetic division. So you use your synthetic division and you set up your problem.
and you want to make sure that you, all your exponents are in decreasing order and you're not missing any. And now it's just guess and check. So um, why don't we try, let's just try putting in 1 and see what happens. So you bring down the 10, multiply, you get 10, add 25, multiply 25. When you add these together here, you're going to get 9, multiply 9. So you can see here that that does not give us a solution. Let's try 2. You keep trying your synthetic division until you find one that works. And you just hope that it doesn't take very long. 10, multiply, you get 20. Add, you get um, 35. Oops, I didn't copy. Here's, here's a problem. I didn't copy this negative down. Let's go back here. This is a negative 15. Let's see if that changes anything with the 1. This becomes negative 5. Multiply. Here you get negative 5. When you add, you get negative 21. It's still not going to give us what we want, so that's okay. All right, let's try this one, though. So when I add these here together, I get 5. Multiply 10. Add negative 6. Multiply negative 12. Add those together, we get 0. So what that tells us is that this is a solution. 2 is one of our solutions. There's 3 total. Now here's what we can do with the, the rest of my, my problem that I have. We can take the 10, the 5, and the negative 6, <clears throat> either attempt to factor it or use the quadratic formula. Because you basically have your, <coughs> this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. <coughs> So negative b would be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, 25, minus 4, a is 10, and c is negative 6. All over 2 times a, 2 times 10 would be 20. If I simplify this down, I have negative 5 plus and minus the square root of, you got 25 plus 240, so 265. That is not a perfect square, all over 20. Those are your other two solutions. So your solutions are, remember this one did not work, your solutions are 2, your x equals, and negative 5 plus and minus the square root of 265 all over 20. Now if you want to approximate those solutions, you can use your calculator. It's negative 1.064 and 0 0.564. <clears throat> all right, here are your solutions right there. That is how you use the rational zero test. You can see um, the only real zero that we had was two, and two was in your list. That's how all of that relates together. All right, let's look at the second example here, p over q. So the p would be plus and minus the factors of 30, which is 1, 2, 3, <clears throat> 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. The factors of Q are just plus and minus 1. This indicates that the P over Q values are all right here with your P. All right, guess and check. Basically, you're going to go through and try to find one of your, your solutions. Um, there are some things that you can do. Um, you can use your table feature in the graphing calculator and see if you have any sign changes, and sometimes that can help eliminate um, some of those, those possible solutions. Um, Otherwise, you just keep guessing and checking. But I would recommend um, using that test, which is the intermediate value theorem, where you use your table feature. OK, well, here's what I can tell you. Of this list, we know that one of the solutions is 6, right here, so 6. Let's find out what we would get back from that. 
So as you test all the numbers, you're going to run across one that works, so six works. You use your synthetic division, and you go through, <clears throat> and you find what the remainder is going to be here, which will be zero. And we do get zero for the remainder. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take what you have left here and see if there's anything that you can do with that. You can either use synthetic division again until you find more solutions. Um, or what you can do is take and you have x squared. This is, I'm sorry, x to the third plus 5x squared plus x plus 5. And I don't know if you would recognize this, but with four terms here, you can group and factor. It will factor nice. Um, you take an x squared out, you get x plus 5. Here you can just take 1 out and you still have x plus 5. I've got my binomials x plus 5 and x squared plus 1. So here's what we know. Um, we know that 6 is a solution. And we also know right here negative 5 is a solution. And my other two solutions would become come from x squared plus 1, set it equal to 0, because here you know you're, you are setting your polynomial equal to 0. x squared would equal negative 1, and so x would equal plus and minus the square root of negative 1, which is an i, your imaginary unit i. So those are your solutions. All right, and there you have your solutions. The smaller your p over q um, values are, the smaller that these are, the um, easier it's going to be for you to find all your solutions. All right, let's see what we've got next here. We've got what's called the Descartes rule of signs. Here's what the Descartes rule of signs tells us. If f of x is a polynomial, the number of positive real zeros, positive zeros, is equal to the number of variation in sign. So you're just looking for, as your polynomial is written out, how many times does it change this from positive to negative back to positive to negative? That's your sign change. Or less than that by an even integer. The second part to this rule is the number of negative real zeros is equal to the number of variations in sign of f of negative x. So the negative zeros come if you substitute negative x and see if you have any sign changes. Let's use this to try to help us find our um, p over q values that maybe will work. It helps you narrow down your list. Here's our example eight. So use Descartes' rule of sign to determine the possible numbers of positive and negative zeros. List all the possible rational, rational zeros. Use a graphing utility, utility to eliminate possible zeros. And then determine all the zeros. Let's do Descartes' rule. So how many positive solutions can we have? How many negative? And we're going to go ahead and include imaginary ones just because that's coming down the, the pipes here over the next few days. All right, for positive, you go back through here and you look at how many sign changes do you have. So it goes from a negative to a positive. There's one change, and then to a negative, that's two changes, and so there's three changes. So how, how this works is there's either three positive solutions, or you decrease that by an even integer of two, or there's one. So there's either three or one positive. So we know there's a positive answer to this. There's three solutions total. So the solutions come from the degree. All right, negative. So you're going to put a negative x in for all of these. Now, all that I'm going to be concerned with is whether this is a positive or a negative. So if you put a negative in, negative times negative, this would get you a positive. You put a negative in here, the 20 is still positive. The 36 would become positive, and the 16 is positive. There's no sign changes by putting an f of negative x in. So there's no negative answers. So what that tells us is if there are three positives, then there's zero negative and zero imaginary. If there's one positive, then there are two imaginary because there aren't any negatives. So those are our possible solutions. 
So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we know the types of solutions we're going to have. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our function here. And the second thing that we had to do was list the p over q's. So our p over q's would be the factors of 16 and negative 3. So plus and minus 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Those are your, your top values. Your bottom values would be plus and minus 1 and 3. So um, our results to that would be either plus and minus 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. We could also have 1 third, 2 thirds, 4 thirds, 8 thirds, or 16 thirds. These are our, our solutions, the list of our solutions. So now what we're going to do is uh, we need to go through and find one that works. You can use your calculator to help eliminate some values. Maybe I'll use your table feature. Um, but what I know is that 4, 4 is going to be a, one of our solutions. And so let's go ahead and, and use that. So I put 4 on the outside. And I've got my negative 3, 20, negative 36, and 16. Whoops, positive 16. No reason to really write the positive there. Bring the negative 3 down, multiply negative 12, add, get 8, multiply 32. You're doing the synthetic division. You get negative 4, negative 16. This does indicate that 4 is one of our solutions. Now what we're going to do is um, try to figure out if there's anything that we can do with the polynomial that we're given at this point. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and work with, uh, and just use the qu quadratic formula. So negative 8 plus minus, because this is ABC, square root of B squared 64 minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 4, all over 2 times negative 3, negative 6. This equals negative 8 plus and minus the square root of, you have 64 here, and it would give us um, minus 48, that's 16, over negative 6. So what we have is negative 8 plus and minus 4 over negative 6. Our solutions, our final solutions to this would be 4. Okay, that's the first one I, I showed you right here, 4. And then we've got negative 8 plus 4 divided by negative 6, which should be 2 thirds. And our other solution, negative 8 minus 4 divided by negative 6, which is 2. So these are our, our solutions. And you can see we had three positive solutions. All right, we got one more problem to try. Use Descartes' rule of sign. So the number of positive solutions would be and negative and imaginary. You look through here, we've got one sign change, two sign changes. So we would have either two positive real or zero. If I find f of negative x, then this would still be a positive, this would still be a, a minus, and this one would still be a positive. So there's still two sign changes for f of negative x as you go from positive to negative back to positive. So you could have either two negative or zero negative. You have to re always reduce these by two. If you have two positive, two negative, then that would mean you have zero imaginary. Um, you could possibly have zero positive, two negative, and two imaginary. Or we could have zero of all of them and four imaginary. So we just don't know what we have yet. Okay, but you could crisscross these. You could have two positive, zero negative. All right, you gotta get all of the combinations there. So what we're going to do now is take this problem and, and find all of the zeros. All right, here we go. Here's our polynomial. <clears throat> it is a uh, form of a quadratic because we have three terms. You have power of 4, 2, and it decreases down to 0. We actually, uh, we can solve this maybe by factoring instead of the p over q's and things like that. If you have other methods to solve, then by all means you should do that. So 4x squared 
x squared. Uh, this 4 here, both signs are positive. 1, you just have to make sure, do these add to 17? And they do. So it, it's factorable. You set it equal to 0. You set each one of these equal to 0. And you're going to solve. So subtract 1. Actually, here, these signs are in the middle. This was a negative 17. So I'm going to come back here. And we need to change these signs. These are subtraction. Minus, minus, minus. Okay, so that's subtraction here. So you're going to add the 1 over. You have 4x squared. Divide by 4, 1 fourth. And so x equals plus and minus the square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half. The other one, you do x squared minus 4, and you set it equal to 0, and you get x squared is equal to 4. So take the square root of that, you get plus and minus 2. So these are all of our solutions. You can see here we had 2 of each, 2 positive and 2 negative. You'd get the same result if you used the p over q's and synthetic division. It just might have, it, this was much quicker to factor. Here is your assignment for the rest of this uh, section 3.